Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 391 for Tuesday, August 1st, 2023. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Sponsors for this episode include our friends at Super Mega Ultra Groovy, the makers of CapoApp.com. It's going to give you song learning superpowers like it has given us. We'll talk more in depth about how that's going to work in a little bit. For now, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Currently enjoying a beautiful evening in Capitola, California, Paul Kent. Hey, man. How goes today? Hey. Today's a good day. We had a, we had a killer, killer gig last night. I mean, it's nice. one of those gigs where it's a homer gig. You know, you got tons of people who know you. The energy is building. The introduction was great. And the first note, the dance floor filled up and, and the energy was through the charts. 90 minutes, you know, so a really manageable amount of time. Yep. We put the pedal in the metal and it was just, it was a heavenly gig. It was great. That's great. Sound was good. Band played well. All that, like, like, obviously the crowd was into it. Band was, was equally into it and all of that. Uh, Yep. It it was, it was just that energy that kind of goes through every part of your organization. We had, you know, we had Bill and and Mickey, who's often our sound helper, did a great job. You could actually, you know, I I posted one video of this on uh, the House Rockers Facebook page. So if you look us up and you can kind of see just with like an audience mic, how good the sound was. So it was cool, man. And it's just those ones that, you know, all is right in the world. Those the, those days you, those days that make every all the bad days go away. Ah, uh, yes, I love those days. Those are good days. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I was in. Uh, I didn't have any gigs this weekend. In fact, I just got back yesterday from a trip to Chicago, Philadelphia, and New York. The first part of it was uh, work. I was at Mac Stock Seven, which is a conference for for Apple users out in Chicago, and it was great to get together with that group again uh it had been since 2019 a lot of folks uh, a lot of mutual friends were there of course paul and uh a couple of days before max stock michael plant uh who is the average wine enthusiast but uh, but also sort of a member of that community uh not sort of also a member of that community uh he reached out and was like hey should we play somewhere this weekend and i was like uh, sh- sure. He's like, I'm driving. I can bring a cajon and, you know, some uh, like a PA and vocal mics. He's like, we can be self self-sufficient. I was like, sure. I'll, I'll play anywhere, anytime, you know? And so, uh, we, we spent uh, all of about, you know, an hour and a half going through what songs do we each know? And, uh, and then we played, we actually played twice. We played at uh, our friend Barry's house. Uh, he had a little barbecue to like kick things off. And then there was an event on Saturday night at Max Stock, where we we played just the two of you or more people? No, just the two of us. We did it acoustic style, and uh, I even wound up playing guitar for a bunch of uh, of tunes. But uh, but it was fun, and it, you know, it was nice to kind of play music for that crowd of people again. It had been well since the last cool. time you and I played for the you know yeah. MacWorld All Star Band crowd. So yeah, it was um, it was good. It uh, you know, it's always it, like it's it's interesting. He and I had never played music together before until we played at Barry's party. And it, you know, the stakes were low. Everybody was, you know, very supportive and everything, but it's, it's interesting as we started the first tune, I think we started uh, playing the letter uh the, well, the box tops tune that Joe Cocker made famous. And uh, Mike played guitar and sang it on that one. And so it was just like playing Cajon and harmonies. And so he counted it in and, I started playing with him and then it was like, Nope, uh, I'm not going to play with him right now. I need, <laughs> I need to learn how he like his strumming patterns and how he feels time. It's like, you know, I can lay out for the intro of this and just like get a feel for how he, you know, plays and works the instrument. It was like, cause, because in an acoustic setup, the guitar player is the drummer, right? The guitar player drives the groove. And so it's like, you gotta, you gotta follow that instrument. Uh, in you know, in that kind of lineup, despite the fact that I'm playing a percussive instrument, it's like no, I'm I'm playing along. The the guitar player drives the bus, and so I was like, yeah, let me let him drive for a little bit. Let me let him go a few blocks before I before I join in. And uh, sure. 
Yeah, and it was, and then it was great. Like then we were we were off to the races, and it was it was fine. But uh, but it's always interesting playing with somebody new, and I imagine that's what it's like for people playing with a new drummer. You know, in a drum set environment where it's like you got to learn how this person sort of keeps time, uh, you know, and communicates the time in uh, in their own way because we all we all have our own ways of doing it. So so it was fun. But it was good. And then it's great. Yeah. Then we went, uh, then I met Lisa kind of, I, I didn't come all the way home. I, I, uh, I met Lisa. We wound up driving down to Philly and then Manhattan. We saw fish and, uh, for a bunch of nights there and, uh, and, and, and just, you know, had like a, a little couple's getaway. We, 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 we found the band fish right when we started dating. We didn't, neither one of us were into it, uh, before that. And so it's just been kind of the thing that's been a, a nice source of inspiration for like couples getaways th- over the last, whatever, you know, how long we've we been together, 26 years, 28 years, more, more, yeah. more than that, something like that. But yeah. Yeah. Cause we'll hit 25 years married this year. So, you know, probably 31 years or something, but anyway, it, you know, so it's been, it was nice. It was nice. It was, and oh. fish is doing something that I haven't seen them do in decades. Uh, they are allowing, themselves to speed songs up if the energy is there and it's something they used to do like back when we started seeing them in the you know early 90s and they have they have been far more constrained in that regard in the last you know decade or so and this whole run many songs ended you know quite a bit faster than they started and and the energy was there for it. Like, I, I think, I think it's a good thing in, in the right moments. It's a good thing to, to sort of let the energy dictate the tempo. Um, not all the time, uh, you know, there, but, uh, but it, it's not always, it's not a universally bad thing to let that happen when it, when I agree it, when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a sweet spot between yes. recorded, re- recorded version plus energy Versus a little bit out of control, you know, with, with uh, adrenaline driving everything. Correct. But. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. But, but the, you know, to, to let the tempo increase, you know, 5 BPM throughout the tune or even, even yeah. 10 BPM sometimes again, you know. A little edge. It, yeah, it, it gives it edge. Well, it's, I think of it as another, like, device to add energy to a song. There, there are many ways to add energy to a tune. And you can do it by adding co- complexity uh, to, you know, the number of notes you're playing. You can do it by modulating, right? I mean, that's generally not something that happens on the fly, at least it hopefully not. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're, like there's all those devices for adding energy to a tune, even a, a, you know, a breakdown to kind of add some, some, uh, some, some contrast, uh, you know, of the energy in a tune, those kinds of things. But speeding up is another one and it's, you know, it's okay. It's best if you are aware that you are speeding up and not just if it's a choice right <laughs> yes yes or even i've seen if, the other go, side of it yeah go ahead yeah yeah so there was a really well-known band in this area that played quite a bit and the best i can explain is that they were they were over conscious about tempos and yeah. they 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 felt slow to me often and and the energy of the of the night never really built. Yes. And so it was, it's yeah. So it's the other way around. So there's, I mean, I guess if you're a good drummer and you, like you said, if you are controlling it and if your band is really tight together and and feels the energy together and goes to that place, because the other thing that happens is some guys are feeling it and other guys are trying to hold it back. And right. So, Oh, that's a disaster. Yes. So the solution is a chemistry thing as much as it is anything else. Like, does your whole band go as a full unit to that place where you know the, the adrenaline's about the same for everybody? So yeah, yeah but it is. I, it, it often live music feels feels a little bit better. Like you said, five is is you just you just feel it more than you notice it. Yes, yeah. It, where I would, I mean, I would, I you know, I've been seeing fish for a long time, and I I know where I know where I like the tempos of some of their tunes, and it's been ten years since I've heard a few of them. At the t- at my preferred tempos, you know, and yeah. and this past week it was like, oh yeah, there they are, okay, and but where else? Where all where I also noticed it is, you know, they would start a tune or whatever, 
and then they then it would open up into a you know a a bit more of an improvisational kind of jam session thing and and there sort of all all bets are off but what happened a few times is the tempo sped up pretty substantially during a jam and they kept it there even when they returned to the head of the tune to like finish the song it was like okay well this is like 15 or 20 bpm faster than where this song starts and would be way too fast for the bulk of the tune but interesting to hear them you know navigate you know the, the a final chorus or or some you know outro or something at, at this blistering tempo and but but it worked because you know no one in the band at least was outwardly upset by that you know it was like they were all on board like you said a chemistry thing it was like yeah yeah this is how fast we're playing and and now we're going to play the end of this song and sure it's going to be you know 15 bpm faster than it normally is but that's fine like it's it's where the energy currently is so let's end the tune and we'll play something else it's fine so, there you go. yeah no it's um it's fun i you let it folks let us know like what devices work for your band to add energy to things because i'd like to uh, like we can all learn from each other and not every device works as well for one band as it would for another. So let us know feedback at giggabpodcast.com and uh, we'll share it on the show. All right. Hey, well, as I mentioned earlier, today's show is brought to all of us by super mega ultra groovy. These are the folks behind capo, which is our go-to app for learning music by ear without capo. We know how frustrating it can be, right? All the music and video players that are out there make it hard to move around in a song the way we need to when we're doing the learning of the song, right? Finding exactly the right spot you want to hear, changing the playback speed can sound terrible, looping a section of a song is either really difficult or impossible. Well, this is where Capo comes in because it gives us song learning superpowers. For precise listening, you can use Capo's transcription playhead to tackle solos in bite-sized chunks and get that looping thing happening. It's awesome. And when you slow down your songs, even at a quarter speed, they still sound great. And that's because Capo is magic. No, it's not actually magic. It's built using high-end studio quality audio stretching technology. But to us... It feels like magic. And I've barely scratched the surface, right? Capo also lifts chords, it detects beats, and so much more. And the best part? Capo gives you all of these tools completely free. There's no account to create, no ads, no sneaky trial subscriptions. You have nothing to lose. So head to capoapp.com or search for Capo in the App Store and download it for your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad. Again, that's Capo by Super Mega Ultra Groovy. C A P O. APP.com and our thanks to Capo for sponsoring this episode. All right, Paul, we got a question from Callie that on the surface feels like an ethical question, but I, I think there's a practical element of this too. So I'll read it. And then my guess is this is probably going to dominate the rest of our discussion today. <laughs> uh, Callie says we have a member of our band who promotes their other band during or after our gigs. For example, we just got a gig at a new venue that I worked very hard to get. When we showed up for the gig, he immediately started courting the decision maker for the venue and started promoting his other band behind our back. A few weeks later, the venue person called me and asked my opinion of the other band since there were no videos to review, and they said they trusted my opinion. I told them the truth, and said I had never seen this other band, so I recommended going to see them live to make sure that's what they want. It seems like this band member of mine has created competition between our two bands, and I'm not feeling good about it. And this is not the first time. How would you guys handle this? So, yeah, the questions like this fascinate me, right? It yeah. fascinates me that people would do this, especially this way, like right away digging in. I mean, I play in a ton of bands, right? And whenever I'm playing, whatever band I'm playing with, I make sure I am 100% representing that band as though it's my sole focus. Because for the night, it certainly is, right? Now, once I've played a venue a few times, if the, it, you know, I, I'm someone who strikes up conversations. This is not going to come as a surprise to anybody listening, right? Uh, I, I don't strike them up to to be like underhanded. It's just who I am. I'll talk to people or whatever. Sometimes I'll wind up, becoming social media friends or whatever with the promoter or they, you know, they'll, it's not 
uncommon for a, a you know, a, a person managing a venue to eventually understand that I play in multiple projects. I won't be the one that brings it up. Right. But it, it happens because, you know, I am I am a single human. Right. And so it like if you start to get to know me, you will see that these things are are, are true about me. But and if they ask about another project, I mean, I'm happy to discuss it. But for me to bring it up, first of all, like it, that's just not cool. But secondly, regardless of whether it's cool or not, it's not going to work well for me if somebody sees that I'm like this desperate you know, person who's just going after the, the, the short sale and trying to get it, get, like that's unprofessional. It doesn't make me look good in my opinion. Now I could be, you know, reading into this and maybe nobody else thinks that way, but I, 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 it, my opinion, my feeling is if I want another one of my bands to play at a venue that I'm playing with, I'll ask the person in the band I'm playing with to make that introduction for me because now, uh, they've now I've got, you know, third party sort of endorsement of this. Like, Oh, you should talk to Dave about one of his other bands. They'd be perfect here. It doesn't always work out that way, but to me, that's the right way to handle it. I think. All right. Yeah. Well, wow. What a question. And what, what a, a question. And, so and we've, yeah. we've reached out to some friends about this too, but we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. 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 I mean, and Again, there's no black and white. So, you know, in this guy's situation, was there any kind of implicit precedent that it was okay to do this type of stuff? But fair. The issue of of reputation, your reputation, your band's reputation, I mean, just all sorts of things come up, right? So what does it say about the band that's playing there if the guys in the band are hawking other things at the time? Right. right? Basically, it sends a message that, yeah, this is a side thing or this is a temporary thing, but you should see my other thing. I, I don't know if you know this, but I actually fired the first trombone player we had for this very reason. Really? It, it was at a, a, a club date and, uh, you know, he was the, he was the leader of the horn section at the time. And uh, at a break, he, uh, you know, approached the the owner of the club and uh, the, uh, the owner of the club told me the story afterwards and said, you know, the other club said, oh, I love the horn section, love this band. The guy said, well, if you love a horn section, you should see my band. You should hire my band. Oh. And the owner of the club came back and he felt right. And uh, and I fired the guy the next day. So it's, I, don't, uh, I don't blame you. I mean, what else? Yeah. because not only does it make him look unprofessional, it makes you look unprofessional. Yeah. I, yeah. It, like, despite what, the what fact kind of that you're running there. Yeah. What are you right? But I mean, it, like in addition to it creating this weird competition, I, like, why wouldn't you just be upfront about it? I clearly, and that's this but the is, entitlement. The entitlement to do that is is indicative of other problems, right? It's, like, in, it's, in it's general, a red flag. Yes, exactly. It is. It is a big, and it may be the red flag that's that certain. I couldn't deal with that, and so I was like, not cool. And and he didn't even. He didn't even. He knew it was not cool. He, yeah, he was not surprised when I had the attitude I had, and in in that. That he somewhat calculatedly knew it wasn't uncool and did it anyway, you know, that's even a bigger red flag. So it it's but does it's this a, work? It's a, like I wanna I wanna know. Like anybody out there who's done it, I like it, I, I I mean, whether we whether we judge you or not is sort of irrelevant. Like, no shame. Tell us we're not gonna we're not gonna like berate you about this. But I'm I'm curious, anyone who's who's done this, does it work? Because it, it just seems to me like if I was in that scenario, right? You, you know, I'm playing in your band. It, you, it just reeks of inappropriateness. Yeah, you creates a vibe. Well, and you obviously have a relationship with the the person who's booking the club because you booked the frigging gig, right? Like that that should not be lost on me as one of your band members, right? Like if yeah. it is, then I got you know my my self awareness is is super repressed, right? But. So I know that you know this person. I know you talk with them enough for them to trust you, to pay you, to bring your band into their club. So there's at least that. Now, me going up and having some sidebar conversation with that person without your knowledge, what are the chances in my head that that person's not going to mention this to you? Even if they don't see it as weird, they might be like, oh, yeah, and we're really looking forward to having, you know, your drummer's other band in here. That's going to be great. Like, it's going to come back to you. 
one way or another. So, I, it was just weird so, to me that he it, like, yeah, I don't know. That's well, weird. well to, to, let's shade the nuance here. So sure. people do play in other pro in other yeah. projects. Public gigs are public gigs. The bookers are public. So unless your band has got a tacit agreement and you probably should have some discussion about it in your band one way or another, like, you know, whether you're a leader or a you know, democratic institution, sure. whatever it might be, this should be something that's discussed because definitely if it's not, it could create. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to, to have this discussion explicitly. But yeah, <laughs> but a, but a public gig, you know, a, a club date, you know, concert in the park, festival type of things. If you play in multiple projects and you book multiple projects, and again, if you're a leader and you've hired a guy who has multiple projects, you know it's in his mind somewhere. So if you don't have the conversation to set the ground rules about it, it's a little bit on you, right? Yeah. But you know, public gigs, I think, is one thing. Um, because, you know, musicians play in multiple projects and they want to work and, and you can, even if you don't do it, I think it's, I think okay, it's not I, cool to do it on, on, on the other band's time. On I think, the gig. I think yeah. For me to You're call, there working for that guy. You're, you are correct. there working that band. So that's just good manners if nothing else. Yeah. But for me uh, to call like a, a week later and say, Hey, I'm Dave. I, you know, I play in a couple of bands. The house rockers is one. I, I have this other band. I'd love to tell you about it when, you know, when, when you're ready to hear about it, like I, that's better than, literally doing at the moment we show up <laughs> like, yeah 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 i so, so yes I'm, I'm with you but, on that yeah yeah okay yeah yeah but let's talk about private dates because that's you know i talked to some friends about the issue with private dates and i got three interesting opinions right okay. I'll, I'll, i'm gonna read you some of these opinions All right. so one one opinion was uh i've always been in the mindset that there's more than enough work for everybody and let that abundance mindset direct my thoughts around the business. All right, interesting. I also know that my projects are some of the best organized and professional groups in our area, and that someone who would pick another band based on pricing is going to get a less polished product, regardless of how they're affiliated with myself or musicians that work with me. I, the first part I get, like, you know, there's like, you know, hey, yeah. we're all musicians. And if you truly believe there's plenty of work out there, okay, I could, I could see that you can sleep at night saying, hey, I'd rather my friend get another gig than someone I didn't know. I yeah. that, that resonates with me to some degree. Fair. The issue about, you know, but I don't worry about it because my band is so good. I, I you know, I, I, we talked about this many times. The buyer, the listener, the audience has a different scale of understanding good. And so, you know, you might be giving away, you know, opportunities that you have uh, by just saying it's a free for all. If you want to contact my contact the the booker here, you go for it. Well, uh, okay, and then let me let, let me let's dig into that for a little bit because I I you're, I agree with you that from a music quality standpoint, uh, and certainly a you know talent level standpoint, most of the people making the decisions around who gets booked are not going to be able to discern the difference between a great band and an okay band, right? Like, it, you know, it's, it's all going to be the same. However, they are going to be able to discern the difference between a band who has a polished presentation and knows how to market themselves and knows how to work the logistics the right way and knows how to be professional versus a band that doesn't have their act together in the off stage portion of it all, right? The, the business side of it. So if this person is talking about, I know they're going to get an inferior product and is talking about the whole, not just what you see on stage. They might, they might be onto something there. Like if, if they trust their business is put together better than the business of anyone else that would be competing with them. Well, maybe they got something there. You know, I, I could see that. And maybe that's what they meant. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Another guy told me, I don't see how you could how you could challenge their ability to do this without consequences. Policing your people's business relationships is pretty uncool. I, I don't I don't get that. I mean, are, are, aren't you policing that you don't want them to get drunk at the show? Aren't you policing you know how they dress? Right? You know, like <laughs> there's a whole bunch of I, there's a whole bunch of things that you as a band leader or as a band member 
you know, expect in terms of code of conduct from the people that are with you. So yeah. I wouldn't buy into, I wouldn't buy into that. There's no right at all to do this. But the question is, what no, is, that, what is the right thing to that's, do? That sounds like someone who just wants to avoid conflict. And, and, and I, I get Maybe. that, uh, you, you know, like Maybe. in general. So I like, sure. You know, here I am giving everybody the benefit of the doubt. I don't know. That's why it's my job. There you go. Right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now I also talked to, I have a very good friend. The benefit of the day. Benefit. <laughs> Title, title, lock it in. So then I talked to my friend, uh, really one of the best musicians I know, superb musician. He works out of San Diego. Okay. He he has two projects that I know of that he does. One is a, a cover band that has an amazing business model. A woman started the band, and he's a side band in that band. Uh, but he's been a full-time musician, you know, his whole life, right? Yep. And when I asked him about the ethics of this, he said, F, no. Ah. Completely, <laughs> completely against musician ethics. Um, you, you know, if you approach, when you are there working for someone, you are with that one. And you look at this relationship, whether it's actually an agent relationship or the band leader is basically sure. serving as the agent. It is that, it, when it comes to private gigs, it is that person's client and everything gets cleared through that person. That's just, and, and that, that resonated mostly with me. I mean, I get that. Like you do a lot of work to cultivate business relationships, if nothing else. And he even said like, you know, he does solo classical guitar stuff. If anyone approaches him, cause he's a great player at a gig, he says, you know, you gotta go talk to the agent or go talk to the band leader, even out, outside of a gig, you know, well, if you heard me there, you know, you get, you gotta, you know, go through that person. And, and that, seems to make more sense. And as I kind of do delve into this, you know, one of, one of my bandmates said, you know, it's not uncommon when you have a band, you have a bunch of side men. If, if that band, you know, we'll use the house rocker. So I have a private client and he wants to hire someone else. He goes through the house rockers. It's not unreasonable. I wouldn't do this, but I, I get it. It's not unreasonable. You know, for you, if I, you know, toss a gig to you or, or, or you know, it's my client to, you know, you get a finder's fee or something like that, sure. and then everybody's happy with it, right? That, I, I, I don't feel a need to enforce anything like that, but understanding what is the right way to do it. And it does resonate with me. We work very hard to cultivate private event clients. If nothing else, you direct it back and you have a conversation with your band leader, if your band leader essentially is the agent, and the band leader should get first crack at trying to sell his band or whatever he wants to sell, because his client, and then, you know, if, if, if it's something special that someone else does, like my buddy does classical guitar, you know, I, I would never have an issue like that, but you really have to respect that client, client, you know, provider relationship. I, and that, that resonates as the truest thing with me. I mean, I'm sure, you know, to some people listening to that, I guess that Paul's being a dick, <laughs> maybe, but I, but I, that no, just I think, I think if, again, if, I can't, I didn't put this band together to be a marketing machine for other people to do side things and to do the work of finding the clients for them. So, so I don't, I, I don't think you're being a, overly harsh. I don't think you're being a dick. I think it sounds overly binary, right? It, it, there, there are, there are shades. This is a, there's a continuum here. It's not one way or the other. I like, I, I have made, I have had more success making sure everyone else is successful uh, than by any other means, right? Because it, it, it allows me, it affords me the opportunity to sort of be involved and remain involved in things that people might otherwise cut me out of, right? Like, you know, just being, being selfish. I like seeing other people succeed. So I have, I have always set up my businesses such that other people are going to have success. And when that happens, I get, I have success too. And, and I, I, you know, I was, uh, I had, like we all do had people that sort of, you know, mentored me or that I, I sort of followed after early on in, in my career. And I found that those people who were the sort of master networkers, the ones that were always out there saying, Oh, you should know this person and, and making these introductions that were super valuable but not expecting any, you know, finder's fee or anything like that. Right. I, I've, I've had, I've benefited from that and I have given it back in spades. I think I've probably given more than I've received, but I don't know, maybe not, you know, but I, it's, it doesn't stop me. Right. I, I just keep, I, I, I will introduce people anytime I can. And 
what I always say to the folks like the, the podcast that we represent at Backbeat, I would say, look, our goal is for you to make money. If it makes sense for us to do that together, great. If you're better off on your own, that's fine too. Now, we do protect our relationships, however. It, you know, if we bring a sponsor to a show, we certainly aren't going to be happy if that show, you know, winds up, you know, or the, it's rarely the show that does it. It's often the sponsor, believe it or not. If the sponsor tries to do an end around and cut us out, most of the time the shows will be like, no, you got to work through Backbeat. Like, that's just how that works. And so I kind of feel the same way about this. Like, would I expect anyone myself or as a band member or, you know, a band member, if I, if I was the one that booked the gig, would I, is it okay that somebody like goes up to a club owner or manager at the gig and approaches them and all that? No, that's not okay. Like that, that's like, no way. Like you got to, you know, be part of this band for tonight. Right. Is it okay if they go up to them after the fact? I mean, it's less not okay, but it would be way better if they came to me and said, Hey, I think there's an opportunity for me to work there too. I, you know, what do you think about that? Would you introduce me? Would you do this? Cause I've, I've done this in both directions and it just works out so much better. And if there is a, a reason to say, I need to manage, like, let me manage this, you know, either it's a new, most of the time for me, that's because it's a new relationship. It's like, yeah, Hey, wait, you know, this person doesn't know me well enough yet. I don't want to just start giving out their contact information. Let, let, let's give it a little time. Let's work that, you know, and then, and then yes, when that door opens up, I'll happily make the introduction, like those kinds of things. Sure. But, but I don't think it's a binary thing. I, I think there's, yeah. there's, there's shades here, but, it, but the <clears throat> most important thing is communicate with each other. Like if, if, you know, if I'm playing in a band and I'm the one that wants to reach out to a, a venue or someone in a band, if I have the contact and they want to reach out, like, what is the harm in talking with each other? I, I, there, there's no harm. It's all upside because well, here's a few colors to this. So my buddy, what he shared was that the most important thing you have as a musician is your reputation. Yeah. And he's, he's in a fairly competitive market. He plays in a real good band that provides him a lot of work. So why would you do anything that would put into that band leader's mind, you know, is, is this guy on my team or not? Right. Exactly. So that's one thing. And, and he emphasized word gets around, right. Band leaders talk, you know, club owners talk. Yep. Right. So reputation is the one thing. Once you screw it up, it's very, very hard, if not impossible. It's going to take a repair. long time. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. But, exactly. you know, but what you were saying about. Do you remember I said this on the show a couple of weeks ago, like if in life you do something that affects someone else, you need to be a good person and have a conversation. Right. Yes. Yes. The lack, the lack of conversation speaks space. I don't care. If you're if you're a avoid confrontation type of person, you're not avoiding the confrontation. You're kicking the can down the road because that's right. if you've done something that's that's going to kick somebody off, it's going to come back as be even worse, right? Yep. And so you know, thinking that you can get away with something and not have to pay the piper at at some point in time is pretty naive thinking, I think, especially in kind of incestuous world of of musical communities. I, I totally agree. Yeah, it just like the idea. To not just talk about it, it seems crazy to me. It, and yeah. I, maybe I'm being naive. I am. Pro I probably am. I don't know. I like. I've certainly left more business on the table because I'm not, you know, ruthless and cutthroat and all of that. But a, I get to sleep at night, and b, I lead a pretty charmed life. Like I. I I, I'm doing okay, <laughs> you know. So, so through your so through through your filter, and I and I again, you're saying there's nuance. Yeah. So let's take let's take this the the um, situation where it's a total hobby band. Everybody knows it's a hobby. Sure. Nobody really cares, right? That's yep. that's one thing. Yep. But but you probably would have had to have a conversation or know the people really well to know that nobody cares. And then it's a cool thing. So you're, yeah, you've you're already had that, the conversation at that point. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you're saying you don't lose sleep out of this because in your lens, your nuance view into this conversation, I, I've got a lot to be thankful for. 
if someone's going to do something like that, it says more about them than it does about me. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. You know, it, it, the next one will come my way. I, I'm, I'm oversimplifying, but I think that that's how I interpret what you're, what you're it, saying. It's, it's a that's a slight oversimplification. I will lose sleep over it if somebody like I am a competitive person. Uh, and so if I have worked to get something and someone else's action takes that away from me, then you'll then you'll hear about it from me and not in a happy way. Right. Yeah. You, you know, you don't get the benefit of Dave there. Right. So. Um, but, but if it's, but, but like, that's what I'm saying. Just have the conversation like, Hey, look, here's this scenario. I know we played there together. Uh, I, I have this other thing. I, I think it would work out. Okay. If I approached them, you know, do, would you mind giving me the introduction? Because the introduction is always going to be better, right? It's, it's always going to be better than you coming in cold. So like, yeah, like, let's talk about that. Let's do that. Like I, there's the flip side of it is just think about the lack of communication. I don't want to look over across the stage to somebody I don't trust or don't know what their motives are or don't know what they're going to do on the break or those types of things. And so, you know, it affects, it affects the enjoyment of playing the lack of clear understanding on this. However, that might happen, a conversation, yeah, yeah a policy that you have, you know, subcontractors sign, whatever level of rigidness you need in order to communicate this, the lack of that. So, you know, it's on in a democratic environment, it's on everybody to lay this on the table and talk about how they feel about it in, in, a, in a band meeting, right? In a leader owned thing. So w when you joined um, Uptown, uh, was there any policy about this? No, no Written, not, nothing but, explicit, but, but I mean, the fact it doesn't need to be said like it's Gary's band, right? He's, he's putting, he's clearly managing the business of this. He hired every one of us in the band. And is it, do we have fun together? Yes. Do we get along like bandmates get along? Yes. I, all of those things are true, but the business is very much run by Gary. And so there's still a, a level of respect that you pay to that relationship. Yeah. You, you just, it's it, to me, it's obvious that if yeah. I want it, well, but let's, let, 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 here's an example. We, uh, several years in a row, we played, uh, this annual party for this local paper company, this company Relico, Right. And I loved how, and, and they treated us so well and it was a family run business, you know, probably 150, 200 employees, like a fairly large business. Right. And, uh, and we were always treated li like equals, you know, we, we got a table in the room and, and they, the, the owner of the company always made sure to say, oh, you know, we're really happy with, you know, uh, have to have Uptown here to celebrate with us again. And and I, I was very impressed with how this guy created and ran this business. And so I wanted to have him on Business Brain, my one of my other podcasts. It had nothing to do with the band other than that's how we met. And so I asked Gary, I'm like, hey, here's here's my idea. Do you have any issue with this? Would you rather make, and, and if not, would you rather make the introduction or should I just reach out to him directly? The guy had sort of emailed all of us once or twice. So like I had his contact information already and it wouldn't have been weird for me to, to show up in his inbox or whatever. And, and Gary was like, yeah, no, that's totally cool. And, um, and so like, but, but even that, it just seemed obvious to me to just ask it. it, it I don't know. And maybe, maybe what we're talking about here is this fear of confrontation it, on the on the bandmates side, like, oh, I don't want to ask the leader because that might be a weird conversation. So I'm just going to ignore it and talk directly to the person and hope they never find out. I don't know. It's it's like I, I don't understand the logic here. It, it's What's it's it? almost almost always better to just have a conversation. Yep. I, I, to, like you're in a band together, yep. I, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, it does say something about the respect to your bandmates and and to that band, right? Yeah, it it, it really you know again even if it's a even if it's a lack of desire to have confrontation. In that, you're basically saying my desire to have a lack of confrontation is more important than you know paying respect to the people that I am in this organization with. That I'm going to go be on stage with, and and like there needs to be a level of trust when you're on stage with people I, it, yeah. I, like, so yeah, I don't know. I, it seems weird to me, but, 
but clearly it, people do it. Like I, I, I am not naive yeah. enough to believe that that this is uh, you know a a, a a fictitious scenario. Well, I, the, I know it's either way. it's either you can't tell me what to do, right? Which is you know certainly yeah. something I've encountered in other frames of managing relationships with musicians. Yeah, you're not the boss of me. Yeah, right. Yeah. And there's, or and then there's fear, fear of, and th- then there's might be a certain level of just naive. So that, that is possible. Yeah. You really don't La- get lack of business acumen is uh, something that runs rampant through musician circles. So <laughs> I, like to give everyone the benefit of the Dave, uh, that's that, that could explain this in maybe 90% of scenarios. Like maybe, right. maybe these folks just don't stop to think like, uh, Hey dude, doesn't it seem like a good idea to have this conversation? And the answer to them might be never thought of it. Huh? Yep. I, so if you are one of those and you've never thought of it, well, think of it now. Yeah. Just think of it. Just have the conversation. It's, it's probably easier than you think probably. And if it's not, then the person who you're playing in a band with is probably a difficult person to deal with. And maybe you want to find another, you know, way to earn some money or, well, again, get out and get there's, there's nuance there, right? So right. it's easier than you think to have the conversation. You might not get the answer that you want, but you will get an answer probably. Yes. Right. You, you know, you it may be like, no, I'm not cool with that. You know, and then, you know, and then, you know what, you, you know, could, but then you could you, still, you, know, you, it, you could still go behind their back at that point. Right. You know that they're not going to be happy, but at least, you know, they're not going to be happy. And now you can go behind their back. And when they say, dude, Why'd you do that? Well, I, it was more important to me than our relationship. Yeah. I, I, or, or like, well, I'm glad I know where you stand on it. That doesn't work for me. I'm going to go play somewhere else. I mean, exactly. Right. Yep. So, so the, the, the love of sleeping at night certainly guides my ethics and obviously guides yours as well. Yeah. To me, it's when, to me, it's when the fairness or justice meter gets pinging that someone is not being cool about something or not being fair, not being respectful about something. Those are the things that tend to like get me really looking hard at do How do I, do I even know this person? Right. 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 But yeah, it I, maybe again, going back to the fact that we're talking about musicians who have found themselves in business, not people who sought out to start a business and found sure. themselves doing music. Right. Given that, that it's the former and not the latter, Maybe it is a good thing to have this explicit conversation and because it, it as a, as a band leader in whatever capacity that might fit for any one of you or us, it's really simple to say, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to be playing at a bunch of clubs. Just, just know that if you are interested in getting to know somebody at the club, just ask me. I know more about the relationship than, than you might think. And I'm happy to be the one to facilitate that introduction. And like just being that open about it will bring people to you. If you say, I will never introduce you. Well, then they're definitely going to go behind your back, right? Like that's gonna, yeah. that's what's going to happen. So opening the door and saying, yeah, have a conversation with me just so we all know what's going on so that there's no surprises for anyone. Cause there might be things about this club that you want to know before you negotiate with them too. And I'm happy to share that as well. You know? Yeah. So I've seen bands where the bands are seldom moments in time. And yeah. when they do get together they're as part of the business, as part of the vibe as you know, part is, is to talk about, you know, we don't get together very often when we do, it's a real special thing. Let me introduce the band. He plays in this band, this band, he, right? Right. There, you know, some situations like that actually co-op those situations to everybody's benefit. Yep. Yep. It yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. There's all but, kinds of, 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 but in general, here. yeah. Yeah. There's all sorts of, yeah. It, it, but in general, I think the, the, at a gig, you're, you're on the clock for the group that you're, that's working there that night and on the clock, can mean a range of things, but in general, it should always mean have respect to that group that's working there that night. That's it. Super easy. Yeah. Yeah. Super easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even uh, if, even if I'm the, you know, like take fling, for example, right. You know, in, in fling, I wind up being the de facto front person. I, I communicate with the crowd. It would never, I, and if, and I hope 
one of my fling bandmates, if they know that this is, uh, if they know this, what I'm about to say to not be true, call me out on it, please. But I can't imagine thinking, oh, I should like promote bitter pill from the stage or monkey fist from the stage. Like that just wouldn't ever even dawn on me. I know. And if it has, I'd be curious as to what the scenario was that, that made it even cross my mind. Like it's, it's not even that it would. And I'd say, well, maybe now it's not the time. It just wouldn't, I can't imagine it would have ever been there. And I could be wrong. I've I've been wrong. Well, we had this discussion once about, about whether you should even, promote other gigs from the stage. And we were like, no, no, like, like, dude, you know, if you're like, Hey, next Saturday night, we're going to be at so-and-so's. Well, the place you're playing is probably open next Saturday night as well. Yeah. I would like to keep their customers. The only gigs I will promote from the stage are gigs at that same club. Like we're going to be back here in six weeks. Come see us here. And, and of right. course I will say, join our mailing list at, you know, whatever flingrocks.com or bitter. Because it, it is obvious to you. Don't mess with that relationship. Right. Right? It's like, don't even don't go there. Don't wade into the waters where <laughs> if you don't know. Right. Yeah. So, it, and, but that same thinking should apply when talking about yeah. other business, when you're on the clock with, with a different group or a certain group. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah but again, yeah. we're, a community of musicians who have found ourselves in business, not a community of business people who have found ourselves playing music. So even uh, what we sometimes just, it's either. It, yes, but even what we just said might not be obvious to everyone. Like the idea of don't promote tomorrow night's gig somewhere else here. It, like that. I, I know that that's not obvious to many musicians because I've been on stage with people as they do it and I cringe. I'm like, oh crap, I got to talk with them afterwards. Uh, shine a light on this. And as soon as you do, they're always like, oh, right. Never oh. thought about that. But that's the thing is never thought about that. Ah, yeah. 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 It's well, this was fun. I knew this would dominate the rest uh, of the, the conversation. Yeah. So yeah, it's good stuff. You got anything else speaking of the rest of the conversation? Tonight, I think... A good, I'm going to tweak, always be performing to be, always be ethical. Ah, oh, I like it. But also, always be performing. Because. Oh, of course. Obviously. 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 Thanks for listening, folks. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Check out capoapp.com. And uh, always be ethically performing. Ethically perform always. 